Greetings hobbies, this is Arthur of Vool, and in this video we're going to be making some sci-fi scenery with a focus on the blocking out as the first stage of a workflow. So this video has come about because I was cleaning up my parents attic and I found a shard of scenery that I had and it was the first bit of scenery I ever bought and it was this. It was the Imperial Firebase and this thing was front and centre in pretty much every game of second edition that I ever played. It was made of cardboard which is why it's now in tattered ruins and I could only find a small bit of it and just brought back a massive nostalgic hit. I'm not sure if you're probably old enough to remember this in second edition or the glories that were second edition but this was fantastic and I thought it'd be really fun to recreate it. So this is going to be a fairly intermediate tutorial where I'm going to be using a few add-ons. I'll talk about those as I go. You won't need those add-ons so you could do things without them if you wanted. And where relevant, I'll link to videos where I've talked about how to do those things without using the add-ons. So I'm just bringing in something that's going to represent the size of the humans that we've got in this. You don't need to use this. You could use a cylinder that's just 32 millimeters wide by about 35 tall and that will give you a fair representation but it's just something that I'm going to have here to be able to give me an idea of what I'm doing. So let's get straight on with this and the first thing from that image is that this was generally about twice as tall as one of these models. So what I'm going to do is press N to bring out the size and I'm going to change that dimension to something like 60. That is going to be about twice the height without being ridiculous on a gaming table and then we need to have the X and Y. Now, this is sort of about nine or 10 bases, but I'm sort of limited by the size of my printer. So I'm just gonna do that about, I don't know, 210 wide in each of them. And this was sort of a square, so that should look about right. Yeah, we'll go with that. So what are we gonna deal with first? So I guess the first thing was that there was this kind of cool underpass that happened on one side. Now obviously this was really thin because it was made of cardboard so you can put any weight on it but let's do this a little bit thicker so that we can actually have a model that's going to print successfully and we could use. So I'm going to press Alt and W to open up Box Cutter. Now the guys at Box Cutter have very generously given me an affiliate link so if you haven't got Box Cutter already there is a link in the description and in the top right hand corner and that will take you to Box Cutter and Hard Ops. I would suggest you buy them together because you get a bit of money off and by buying it you won't spend any extra cash but it will support the channel. So if you want to do that, that's really appreciated. But you could just do this with normal booleans. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box somewhere about there, which is basically going to cut off the entirety of this side. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a sec. Then I'm going to press Q. So this is using hard ops. Ever scroll. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to go into vertex mode. And I'm going to press W to get out a box cutter and select those top vertices. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on snapping and change that to edge. And I'm going to G and then Z that down to be in line with that edge. Now, I think if I just come over here, these booleans are set to fast. I'm gonna change that to exact. Yours might automatically start as exact. Otherwise, this doesn't work when you're what we call hotlining, which is when these vertices are exactly the same height as the other line. Now, the reason I'm doing this is it's gonna allow me to control specifically how thick this is gonna be. So I can just make sure I've selected these vertices. And I can G and Z, let's turn off snapping and then I can control how far down I'm gonna go. And I'm thinking somewhere in the region of half a centimeter should be fine. So I'm gonna go minus five because this is in millimeters, so I know that's half a centimeter in depth. So at this point, that's fairly good, but I do want to, on this end, it did have a bit which was cut off. So let's do that as well. So Alt and W, D, and then change the box to be a line box, and then select my object, and I'm gonna start somewhere around there, and then we've got our line box there and I can again fiddle around with this if I want to but I'm not really too worried about that if I want to I can G and Y and bring that back to about there cool so let's H to hide that and we've got the basic shape of our box and then on our front facing side we did have this bit that stuck out a bit it was almost like a protective bit which was good for the scenery it made it a little bit more interesting so let's recreate that so what i'm going to need to do is actually get access to some of this geometry so i'm going to apply this first boolean which means now we have access to these vertices and then i'm going to select this one side view and then i can press k or if you've got machine tools just two Use the knife tool, I'm going to press C to cut through, Z to keep on the Z axis, and then enter, and we've got this cut going all the way through, which we can now use to be able to just grab this face. So let's get that, and then extrude that out somewhere around there, let's say 40, so a base could hide within it. And then let's make this interesting shape. So using our line box again, I'm just going to cut off somewhere about there, 
So we've got that 45 degree cut. In fact, let's make that a little bit more extreme. Yeah, actually, no, I think I'm okay with that. And then I guess the easiest way to go about this would be to grab that face for with machine tools, which is basically just taking the face out. If you don't have machine tools, you can just duplicate the face. Let's get rid of the booleans. And then I can G and Y and move that the half centimeter, so five, and then go into vertex mode. W to get our box cutter, select those two, G and Z, and then go minus five down there. And then we can just grab that face and extrude that out to somewhere around there. And then we're gonna do the same thing again. So vertex mode, select those vertices, snap to the edge, so G and Y, snapping off, and then G and Y and five minus so we know that this is five let me just check my face orientation because i always seem to screw that up yep there we go so the face is currently the round the wrong way so i'm just going to go into vertex mode a shift and n and that will sort out the normals this is to do with me extruding it technically in the wrong way and then just for safety i'm just going to g and x that out a little bit so we don't have any overlapping faces and then i can just control and minus and we've got that cut out there Let's turn off our face orientation because it makes this look confusing and we've got our nice inset. And then just to play it safe in case we move anything around, I'm going to select that, shift select that, and then control and P and parent it to the object because we're not using box cutter, so it doesn't get parented. If I don't do that, you can see what will happen is if I start moving this around, then it'll screw everything up. Whereas if I parent it, then now if i move this around it doesn't cause any problems so it's just a good idea to do that obviously box cutter does that automatically so we've got this sorted let's make these parts a little bit more interesting so i'm going to come in here alt and w again d and then n gone cutter and let's do something like that just so it's a bit more stylish and then we'll do the same thing at the top so something along the lines of Let's go in somewhere around there, 45, then along, then back out, and then down. And then I'm gonna go into edge mode, select that edge, shift and S using machine tools to put the cursor to the edge, and then I can Q, ever scroll, select that object, and then I'm gonna Alt X, and I want to do that by the cursor, so let's change that to cursor, and then I can click that, and it's gonna put it to the other side, so it's symmetrical. And that will work fine. Cool, let's hide those. And we've got our basic shape going fairly well. Next, let's make our object on the side. So for that, I'm actually going to bring in an entirely new cube just to make things easier on myself later on. So let's scale that up somewhere there. And then let's grab those. Make sure that at the right height again. So G and Z. And then we're just going to move this one up probably around there that'll do and then let's get this in place so we want it somewhere in the middle let's scale that on the x-axis somewhere about there and then we'll scale on the y-axis it doesn't matter if there's some overlap probably about there looks good and then we'll alt and w and again we'll cut off this front section i think i want it a bit steeper something like that yeah, and then let's ever scroll and G and Y that back just so it connects perfectly at the bottom. And this way we know exactly the angle there. We know that that's at 30 degrees because of our snapping. Right, so we've got that sorted. Let's get rid of the end panel. And we're looking pretty good at this point. We need to start dealing with our extra blocks that come on the side. When creating these side bits, I guess there's a few ways of going about it. I'm just going to go for the simple method of bringing in a cube end panel and then let's change this in height to 120 because the height of the original 60 and then because the cursor was at this top edge that means that's perfectly aligned in terms of the z axis and then i'm just going to g and y that across and then let's expand that out so let's do something like s shift and z and then get that to about there looks about all right yeah that would be fine and then let's s and y and make that a little bit wider in the y and then turn on our snapping to edge and then we'll G and Y again so that it brings it perfectly to that edge. That might be a bit big. Let's select those and then bring that a little bit smaller, maybe there. 
And you'll notice that sort of the whole focus of this sort of block out idea is to get everything to approximately proportionate sizes and not really putting in any detail. Now, what I do slightly different to some people is you'll notice I have put little bits of detail in some of the sections. For example, the little notches on the side panels that were sticking out. And we're gonna do the same thing here where we're gonna add in some little details that some people would say isn't really part of the blocking out workflow. But I like to put in a few small details, ones that aren't gonna take me that long, just because they give you a good sense of scale and they give you something to work off of later when you start doing the majority of your detailing because then you have something to compare those details to. So in a similar way, let's add a little bit of detail to this section so we know the general shapes we're gonna be dealing with. I'm gonna do this by stacking cutters, which is a really nice technique so that you can get a final shape. And it does require a little bit of forethought, but nothing too bad. So let's do exactly the same things we did before. Alt and W, let's de change that to a box cut. And I'm just gonna roughly cut out somewhere around there. Q, ever scroll, select that, go into vertex mode and then W out of box cutter, we're gonna select those, snap to edges, G and Z that there, and then actually I think I'm gonna grab those and then G and Y there, and then I can G, Y, and go in five minus, there we go. And then if I just Alt X, then that will mirror that to the other side because it's across the origin. So that was using machine tools, Simtrize. You can just Simtrize this manually if you don't have machine tools. Then, because of what we're going to do later, it's going to be important, I'm going to go in and select the bottom vertices, and then G and Z that up there. And then I think this again has got this being fast, so let's turn this to exact so that we don't have that problem. You'll see why we're doing this in that way and making sure that's at the bottom later. Then we want to put in our support, so Alt and W, and then we want D, and we're going to bring in an Engon cut, and we don't want this being cyclical. And then once I select this, we can Q and ever scroll to select our cutter. Importantly, we're not selecting the object, we're selecting the cutter itself. And then I can just draw a line somewhere at about 45. So like that. And then if I want to change the thickness, I just press T and then I can change that thickness wider or narrower. So let's go something like that. And then we've cut through the cutter to leave this section, which makes this very easy and effective to do. Now, Q, ever scroll, and I'm gonna select that, select that, Alt and X. I don't want it to be the modifier, I want it to be the active origin, and we've got that mirrored to the other side. Now, the only problem with this is they don't look like very good supports, they go all the way through. So if I select the cutter again, go from top down view, D, and then go to box mode, I can just do something like that and then we've got just our supports left. And if you want to make things a little bit more interesting, you can also cut out a little bit there, so then we've got our supports being slightly inset. Not sure if I like that. Yeah, I think I do. But you'll notice that hasn't been mirrored to the other side, so I just need to queue, ever scroll, find that, and then select the thing that I was mirroring across, Alt and X, and mirror, and I should probably actually do that for the central one as well to make sure you'll notice at the moment although it's close they're not exactly the same thickness so i'll select that alt x mirror it and it's got it perfectly the same thickness now what's good about this is all of that has been parented because of the wonders of box cutter so when i press q and go to ever scroll and grab that and then at this point if i just q and q to smart apply that's because i've got it as a quick favorite if you just go to operations and smart apply and then shift and d and then z that up to there i can then click control and minus and i've got that done above as well so it looks perfectly nice and i will do the same thing of making sure it's at the right height by clicking on snapping go to that edge g and z and then now it's perfectly at that edge so i've got this stacked up and we've got everything looking the same. Let's H that and H that. Now we need to do the same thing over here. So what I'm gonna do is come here, Q, operations, and we're gonna use something called Uniquify. If I press shift, what that does is it's gonna make a duplicate, but it duplicates all of the cutters with it and reparents them to this. So it makes things massively faster. And then I can just R90, G that over here, and then let's edge snapping again, G and X, there and then well actually that's pretty close but let's make sure that's perfect 
so G and X that there. And there we go. But for this one, we don't have that second cutter. This is a solid block, so I'm going to delete that one out. And then the final thing we probably need to do for this boxing out is get our walkway that's normally on this part. So this could be a bit fiddly, but actually it's not going to be too bad. If I go into edge mode, because everything is booleans at this point, and because this is double the height of this cube, I can just control an R to put in an edge loop, and then click, and then right click, and that's going to confirm it at the right height. And then I need to make sure my snapping is turned off, and that my auto merge vertices isn't on, which it already isn't. Control and R, do the same thing. I'm going to drag it all the way up to the top, and then I'm going to press G and Z and then minus 5. And that should be exactly at the right point, because we know that this is 5 thick. And then this means I can go into face mode, select that face and that face, Q, and then Alt on EM macro, which is again hard ops, and I can drag that out as far as I want that depth to be. Now bear in mind that a base, and we've got the depth at the bottom, we can see that just here. Bear in mind that a base is 32 millimeters. In fact, there are bases that are 40, but that might look a bit much. So let's go with 32. Plus we've got the five that's gonna be the thickness of the wall on the outside edge. So we need somewhere in the region of, well, 40 probably is about right. So we've got our walkway. And I can control an R, bring an edge loop, and then I can slide that. But because this is done as a percentage, we can't do this perfectly, except for we know this is 40. And we want it five thick, which is an eighth of that. So if I just quickly do 100 divided by eight, we get 12.5. So I can just do this 0.125 minus, and that will be exactly five, or it should be. Let's just double check that. That's T, where's my measure? And then control, click and drag to there. There we go. And we've got five, or close enough to five that it doesn't really make a difference. And then do I want this on the edge as well? I I probably do. So let's control and R, do that. Oh, it's gonna make it all the way along this side. That should be fine, actually. I'm gonna do E to even, click there, G and Y, and then five minus, and then we can start bringing up my walls. Now this is actually gonna cause a problem here where it's not gonna be manifold, but if I go into face and select there, 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 and here, we should be able to fix that using the extrude manifold. Let's see if this works out okay. Let's move that up. How high do I want this? Um, in fact, this seems probably okay, but then we've got a base as well. Let's go 25, because we're gonna be cutting some bits out of this to make this a bit more of an interesting shape. And let's just have a quick look to see if that actually did do it manifold correctly. And yes, it did. So we shouldn't have too many issues there. And just in case we do, I'm gonna go into vertex mode a and press three for machine tools, which is the cleanup, and that should deal with as much of that as possible. So that concludes the basic block out of this. We've got the major details that we want here. We've started some of the minor detailing, but only just to give ourselves a sense of scale. And next we need to start going into the details. Have a great day, guys.